I will give a spare key to my parents for the new house. Huh? What are you talking about? I thought I would let them come and go freely. I won't allow that. If you don't agree, I will divorce you. How authoritarian of him. All right then. My husband, misunderstanding my statement, seemed to think I was submitting to him and grinned. However, what I had agreed to was a divorce. Afterward, he and my mother-in-law faced an unexpected outcome. My name is Jane. I'm a 36-year-old web engineer working from home. I've been married to Philip for 10 years now. I have a 9-year-old son named Tom, and the three of us live together fairly harmoniously. It hasn't always been smooth sailing to be honest. I actually marvel at how we've managed to make it for a decade. I'm pretty sure having a child is a big reason we haven't divorced. We met at the friend barbecue. He was an elite PR consultant at a well-known company. He was down to earth, had a stable income, and was close in age with me. So he seems attractive on paper. He made the first move, and as we got to know each other, we started going out seriously. Things went well, and about a year and a half into our relationship, he popped the question. We promptly introduced each other to our families who gave us their blessing. Our wedding was beautiful, and our marriage started blissfully. We enjoyed our newlywed life, and about a year later, our son, Tom, was born. That's when an issue arose. It was my first time giving birth and taking care of a baby, so obviously, I was anxious. When I mentioned that to Philip, he immediately asked Patricia, his mother, for advice. He said, From now on, mommy will help you, so don't worry. I just wanted to talk to him and ease my worries, but he had already talked to her. And the next thing I knew, she showed up at our house. Jane, my dear, you can relax now that I'm here. I will teach you the proper way to raise a child. I didn't ask for any of that. In fact, I had been reading up on parenting and wanted to try it my way. However, she constantly interfered with me. Don't do it like that. If you want to raise this boy properly, you need to listen to me. She was an incredibly stubborn and difficult person who thought her way was the only way. If I didn't do things exactly as she wanted, she got furious. She came over almost every day. Her showing up was already stressful. But on top of that, I had to prepare lunch and had to make sure there were snacks for her. It all added to the expense. Plus, she used my kitchen and ate food without asking, which bothered me enormously. Not only that, Philip had given her a spare key without my knowledge, so she just walked into our home unexpectedly. The first time it happened, she scared me so much that I almost had a heart attack. And so, during the early years of our marriage, I was exasperated tremendously by her. Of course, I did talk to Philip about it. Hey, about your mom. When I began, he had a proud look on his face and said, Having her around is a good thing, right? I was amazed by his cluelessness and told him clearly. On the contrary, she has been causing a lot of trouble. No way. She acts like she's always right, doesn't listen to what I want, and eats a lot. I have to keep an unlimited flow of snacks in stock. He seemed annoyed. What the problem? She's taking the trouble to come and help you, but you're complaining. She raised me, so her parents' method can't be wrong. Of course, we have to treat her well because she's doing us a favor. Otherwise, we should be paying her money. Nah, it's not about the money, but it's your ungratefulness. You need to change the rotten attitude. I will tell her to be stricter with you. What the? Instead of listening to me, 
he made the situation even more complicated. Patricia received various reports from him and became stricter with me from the next day on. It felt less like guidance and more like bullying. She complained about everything, constantly berating me. You are so inept. I'm worried about Tom's future with your genes. Why did she have to say such things? Her snide remarks were always harsh, and it was taking a toll on my mental health. I thought I would need to consider divorce if things continued the same. While I was being tormented, Philip was asked to transfer to another branch in another state. My boss says it'd be better for my career to move, but I really want to stay here. I quickly mentioned that I wanted to move too. But we have mom's support now. Oh, but we'll be fine. I'm thinking about returning to work too. If you say so, then let's take the chance. I was overjoyed with the opportunity of his transfer. The stroke of luck must have been a gift from the heavens. Fortunately, I could work from home, so the location didn't matter. I could easily follow him anywhere. So, we decided on the move. It would be too far to come over and give you guidance. Patricia lamented, but secretly, I celebrated. I had no doubt that my life would be much more peaceful without her constant presence. I looked forward to finally having normal days with my family of three. The new life in a new place was more comfortable than I had expected. Just not having Patricia around during the day made a huge difference. After dropping off Tom at daycare, I could focus on my work at home during the day, prepare dinner, and have everything ready before picking him up. I had complete control over my schedule. It was truly fantastic. I also had more quality time to spend with Tom. We strolled in the park, went shopping, and enjoyed being just the two of us. By the time Philip came home, dinner was ready, and we could enjoy a happy meal together. It was the family time I had always wanted. I felt so much lighter compared to the days when Patricia constantly interfered with my household chores. I dreamed of staying like that forever. My wish seems to be granted as there was no talk of being transferred again as I anticipated. We spent about six years living there. Tom turned eight and started taking swimming lessons. Watching him diligently learn to swim made him look so cool that I couldn't help but be a proud parent. He grew up to be a well-behaved and caring boy surrounded by plenty of friends. However, just when he was enjoying his school life, Philip's transfer was announced. He was going back to the original office. I had a slight feeling of dread because it meant Patricia would be nearby again. Both my son and I had no choice but to go with him. Tom was reluctant to leave his friends and we had a tearful goodbye party. Then, after six years, we returned to the vicinity of Patricia. We rented an apartment for the time being. My son, being open and friendly, quickly made new friends, which put my mind at ease. My biggest concern was Patricia's presence. I was sure she would visit us just like she used to. As I was dreading, she showed up on a weekend. Oh my god, it's been a while. I'm so happy you guys are back, she said with overwhelming enthusiasm. I couldn't help but wonder if her joy was solely because we had returned. Perhaps it was because she could bully me again. It left me feeling very depressed. As expected, she started visiting during the weekdays soon after. Uh, Patricia, you're here again. Oh, is that a problem? Tom is already in great school, so it's just me at home during this time. There's no need for your guidance. You don't need to come anymore. You're giving me a cold shoulder now, huh? You are terrible. I will tell Philip about this. She was as pain in the neck as ever. Whenever she came over, it disrupted my schedule. I couldn't focus on work and the housework increased. 
so I made it clear that I found her interference unwelcome. Why do you come so often? What about your own housework? When I asked her, she widened her eyes and became irate. That's none of your business. I come here despite sacrificing my own time to check on your housework. I don't need that though. What's your problem? Are you defying your mother-in-law? Are you trying to make me submit? You are saying such disrespectful things. Have you become arrogant in these past six years? You should show respect to your elders. Then please start acting respectful. What a smart mouth! You are a terrible daughter-in-law! Her face turned beet red. Anyway, make me lunch quickly, will you? Huh? Why should I make lunch for you? Because I'm here! It's obvious, isn't it? You came over on your own. I didn't invite you. Why are you causing me trouble? That's actually you, you know. This conversation is going nowhere. Then just give up and go home. No need to tell me, I will. She left fuming, thinking that the nuisance was finally gone. I focused on my work. Due to the ridiculous exchange with her, I wasted quite a lot of time. I hurried to finish my work and started preparing dinner around the time Tom returned. As expected, Philip came home that night looking upset. Hey, I heard from mom that you treated her horribly and drove her away. No, she left her on. Don't interrupt me. She was looking forward to spending time with you again. But to give her such a cold reception, that's out of the line. No way. What she was looking forward to was spending time with me, but bullying me. There's no way she would do something like that. He didn't listen to me at all and took only her words at face value. There was no hint of doubt towards her. He was a complete mama's boy. Whenever she was involved, he lost his ability to make rational judgments. This mother and son pair was truly troublesome. Just as I was thinking, Tom spoke up. I see grandma picking on mom quite often. Philip's eyes widened at the statement. She's always yelling and saying mean things to her. I feel sorry for her, you know. Don't make things up. Why would he? What he said is true. I'm always being bullied, so I just stood up for myself. Thanks to Tom siding with me and testifying to the actual bullying, Philip couldn't say anything more. I can't believe this. His voice faltered. Then he fell silent and stopped talking at once. With Tom's help, I managed to avoid unnecessary exhaustion. I took a mental note to buy him lots of his favorite snacks. After that, Patricia still tried to come over, but I didn't let her in. Hey, why won't you open the door? I don't want you to disturb my work anymore. What? Don't be ridiculous! She rang the doorbell repeatedly. But I locked myself in my office, playing music so that I couldn't hear the noise. Just like that. I wasn't bothered by her anymore. I worked with a smirk on my face. Even then, she kept coming back several more times, but I didn't let her in and gave her the cold shoulder. Do you think you can get away with doing this to me? The one at fault is you for coming without an appointment. Besides, you just come here to make yourself at home. Go back and clean your own house. How dare you! Just open the door already! She started kicking the door forcefully. Please stop. I will call the police. The police? Don't say such a disturbing thing. The one doing the disturbing thing is you. Kicking the door is unacceptable. You don't let me in, that's why. I have a good reason not to let you in. I'm family, you know. Even so, there is a limit to everything. Besides, from my perspective, you are a stranger. If you keep lingering, I really call the police. Fine, I will leave. She finally went away. That night, Philip was angry again. But when I played the recorded audio, 
he was left speechless. I hope that he finally realized the abnormality of his mother. After that, I was relieved that she stopped coming. Philip must have had a talk with her. From then on, I enjoyed peaceful days. Then, when I managed to save up some money, we decided to buy a new home. It had been my long time dream to build a house the way I wanted and live with my family. My dream was coming true. After consulting with the construction company and progressing with discussions, our house was finally completed. Tom and I were over the moon, looking forward to moving in. Then one day, Philip brought up something unexpected. I'm going to give a spare key to my parents for the new house. No, what are you talking about? I want them to come and go freely. Mom seems to be really reflecting on her behavior. I think it's better for all of us to get along. I won't allow that. What? Have I not explained to you what I have been through so far? After all that, it's out of the question to give them a spare key. If you are against it, we should get a divorce. His face turned bright red and slammed the table. How authoritarian of him. I had never seen him like that before. But in an instant, my love for him waned. All right then, misinterpreting what I meant by that. He seemed to think I had submitted to him, and he grinned. As long as you understand. So let's proceed in that direction then. With a smug expression on his face, he thought he had won. But what I had agreed to was divorce from him. Afterward, he and Patricia faced an unexpected outcome. I discreetly started packing my belongings bit by bit and sent them to my parents' house. Then, I moved out earlier than the scheduled moving day and arranged for the movers to come there. After all my belongings were transported to the new home, I unpacked with the help of my parents. That's when I received a call from Philip. Hello? Hey, what the heck is going on? Why are Tom and your stuff gone? Well, we have moved to our new house. Huh? The moving plan was for next week, right? Why did you move on your own? Because we are getting a divorce. What? You were the one who brought it up, saying we should get divorced. Wait, you meant... Yes, I meant all right with the divorce. Don't mess with me. I won't accept it. He hung up the phone. About half an hour later, I heard the sound of someone trying to open the front door. I knew it was Philip and Patricia. I opened the door with the chain still on. Hey, why won't the door open? What have you done to this house? They were making a commotion. You seem to misunderstand, but this is my house. Huh? She let out a startled voice. You didn't know, huh? I purchased this house with my salary. So it's in my name as well. Changing the locks is my prerogative, isn't it? Is this a joke? Philip, tell me it's a joke. This is your house, right? He lowered his head when she demanded his answer. Ah, uh, I can't believe it's true. She was devastated as she learned the truth. It was too much of a shock that she slumped right there. Anyway, can you please leave? Honey, I don't accept the divorce. I have the right to live here too. I think I'm giving mom a spare key, so let me into the house. No, I don't trust you anymore. Let's handle this through lawyers. If you insist on staying here, I will seriously call the police. They hastily left when I threatened them. After that, I was able to successfully divorce Philip. I also received child support for Tom. My ex-father-in-law was disgusted to hear about what had taken place, and Patricia was kicked out of the house. She and Philip now live in a rundown apartment together and are struggling financially due to child support. Well, they brought it up on themselves and I'm quite content with the outcome. On the other hand, I'm enjoying every day with Tom. Eventually, 
I plan to have my parents move in with us. Tom is very fond of them, and I'm sure we will make one happy family. Moving forward, I will continue to work hard at my job while raising him with all my love.